Are these the eight new ministers in Ramaphosa's lean cabinet? When the cabinet reshuffle does occur, it is a foregone conclusion that some departments will be collapsed and merged with existing ones. President Cyril Ramaphosa's spokesperson and former general manager at Brand South Africa Tyrone Seal this weekend said speculation of an anticipated cabinet reshuffle was all hot air. When reminded that the former National of Union of Mine Workers, number, Secretary General and businessman himself dropped strong hints during the State of the Nation address on Friday night, Seal reminded the citizen that Ramaphosa has in fact never given a date on when this reshuffle will happen. What is public knowledge is that the former deputy president is not in favor of the current size of cabinet, which when counting deputy ministers who are not attendees of cabinet meetings stands at a staggering 72. He is also likely to go for experience and expertise in his choice of ministers to turn around a government which has in recent times lost the appetite to serve the interests of the majority of South Africans, the poor and the indigent. When the cabinet reshuffle does occur, it is a foregone conclusion that some departments will be collapsed and merged with existing ones. Many analysts have this weekend questioned the logic of having departments of economic development separated from small business development, or the Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services fragmented from the Department of Communications. In the past 72 hours, a document purporting to be a parliamentary notice of new members to be sworn in on Monday ignited further speculation that these are the new blood Ramaphosa aims to inject into his cabinet. By law, Ramaphosa is allowed to appoint one person who is not a member of parliament a minister as well as a parliamentary councillor to serve as his emissary during parliament sittings. The President of the Republic of South Africa, in terms of the country's constitution, is not a member of parliament. He is required to to appear in Parliament regularly to answer questions. Thabo Mbiki settled on a quarterly appearance and appointed a councillor, who became his ears and eyes during normal sittings. Former State President Jacob Zuma chose to discontinue this role while Ramaphosa was leader of government business. It is not clear, due to absence of solid information, if the document is authentic or whether they will be joining Cabinet. Below is a short bio and what role will be suitable to them as per Ramaphosa's own strict criteria. Dr. Zwilly Guys is a medical doctor and former KZN Premier who managed Lutuli House Finances. We have knowledgeable Minister of Health in Dr. Aaron Matsolady, but ANC is known for redeployment as part of its DNA, as Jackson Thumbu said. Guys may be useful as a Minister of Finance, Health, Social Development and with administrative skills may capably take over from Faith Muth MB at Public Service and Administration. Ronand Lomala is a former former Deputy President of the ANC Youth League. He cut a lonely figure during his steadfast campaign to lobby the NEC to pronounce against Zuma. The Minister in the President needs an energetic young person to oversee the rudderless National Youth Development Agency NYDA. With his crusade against corruption, perhaps he should be given the task of cleaning the mess at water and sanitation. Rulan Ethambi Siwaya is a pan-Africanist and writer and formerly a member of the Ansel NEC. She is a founder of Africa Unmasked and an MBA candidate. The Department of Arts of Culture deserves a rebel rouser after being neglected for many years. It needs a strategic arts operator who can implement arts and culture development projects away from the fruitless vanity projects the department is known for delivering relentlessly annually. David Maysondo is a member of the NEC and the CEO of the Automotive Industry Development Center. He is best known for tabling and leading motions to remove Zuma at the party's highest structure meetings. Should Nail D. Pander be moved to a senior executive position, science and technology can do with someone of his chutzpah. If not give him cooperative governance and traditional affairs ministry to restore corporate governance. Senzom Hanu is a former premier who graduated in international relations. Here is a perfect candidate for a parliamentary councillor, or alternatively to relieve the sleepest mate and go in a mashabain at international relations and cooperation. Other departments crying out for leadership include energy, labor, and with the ANC resolute on expropriation without compensation, land reform will need a tried and tested ANC leader. Vyukanim Dabi was Ramaphosa's KZN campaign convener and the mayor of Ilam Bay District Municipality. Little is known about this comrade but there are still departments like mineral resources that need a new minister. 
Xing Isui Luzi is a Kosatu leader who herself ascended to one of the top positions in the Trade Union Federation under controversial circumstances. In an event that the Department of Women survives the CHOP, female empowerment can be given a boost with a radical leader. The country's most tainted service delivery department, Social Development, can also benefit from a leader who has long spoken out against corruption. Zizi Kodway is a former communicator in President Jacob Zuma's office during his first tenure. He momentarily worked as a marketing manager for Gauteng Film Commission before being elected into the NEC and serving as the party's spokesperson. Kodway is a mover and shaker and will be at home in departments such as a sports and recreation, tourism, home affairs and perhaps even a candidate at the moribund arts and culture. Let it go.